everyone, I'm Jane. I'm here because Pink Lady have asked me to do some new Pink Lady car videos for home. Um, so I can share ways with you of keeping your body fit, strong and healthy when we're all spending a little bit more time at home. Today's workout is a short workout that helps you really mobilise through the shoulder, upper back area because we all tend to get a little bit rounded in the shoulders and stiff through that mid upper back and it helps you strengthen those back muscles so I always like to mobilise and then activate. So for our mobility work we're going to start in a kneeling position and I want you to just check your hip position, but we're not bent forwards here where we've got a crease with the hip, but rather really pushing those hips forwards using those glutes. Now we want neutral pelvis, so we want to make sure that the three bones at the front of the pelvis are all level with one another, so two pelvic bones and pubic bone. So your triangle shape is square to the wall in front of you. And then just feeling really long in the spine from the head to the tailbone. And then from here, just making sure that your breath is in your ribs. You can feel that pull up and draw in of your deep core muscles. So hands together in a prayer position. We're going to start with some rotation through the spine. So on your in-breath, you're going to rotate your torso to the right. So twist it from the waist to the middle back, using your out-breath to centre and then changing sides. So focus on keeping your hips square to the wall in front of you as you turn your chest bone to the side wall. And on that rotation, you're just making sure your thumbs remain glued to your chest bone as your nose is still in line with your fingertips. So you feel to be turning your head from your waist and your middle back, not from your neck. We really want to feel that we're initiating this movement from the torso. So the more stable we keep the hips and the neck, the more we optimise that movement through the ribcage part of the spine, which is the part that we really intend to be targeting today, just bringing some nice movement through that mid upper back. So one more to each side and then coming back to the centre. So left hand goes on your pelvis, right arm goes to the side of your body. And all we need to do is make nice arm circles. So you're gonna reach your arm up to the ceiling, then turn your palm outwards to the side wall and reach the arm back and down. So really trying to get some nice rotation in the shoulder, opening up through the chest. And we're gonna add the spine twist to this. So as you circle the arm back, I want you to turn your chest to the side wall. So focus on keeping that pelvis still, like we practice with the hands with that prayer position. And I'd like your eyes to follow your hands. So we're starting to get some movement through the head and neck here as well. And then once we've done this circle, we're going to change arms. So nice straight arms, just keeping that torso still to begin with. So we really feel the isolation of movement to the shoulder, trying to feel that the arm bone turns outwards in its socket as you turn that palm out. So palm faces in and then turn the palm of your hand to face out as you reach that arm back and down. And then adding that rotation of the torso. That's it. So still thinking of going long through the spine here, feeling that we're getting that movement through the ribs. And I'm taking each arm circle as an opportunity to really open up through the chest and stretching through the lats as well, the side back muscles. So we're gonna make this one the last one and then hands behind the head. If this doesn't feel kind to the shoulders, elbows a little bit more forward. And then from here on your next out breath, you're gonna bend the spine over to the right and then use that in breath to come back to that neutral position, changing sides. So again, pelvis stays still and stable. I want you to feel that your head goes to the side because it follows the torso as the abdominals bend the torso to the side. So for me, when I do this exercise, I focus on lifting the top ribs upwards to the ceiling as I do it. So it's more about the lift and the length through the spine. So this is a really nice exercise to stretch through the side abdominals and into the lats, which are your side back muscles. When these muscles are tight, when the lats are tight, it can inhibit the shoulders from moving. So sometimes those tight lats can pull the shoulders forwards in internal rotation. So we're gonna twist to the right, and then we're gonna do the side Bend, so stretching that top elbow up to the ceiling, coming back up and then centering. So rotate and I'm thinking of trying to get my back elbow down towards my heels, my top elbow reaches up, lift that spine up and centre. We're just going to do one more of these, still trying to keep that pelvis 
as stable as possible. So trying to keep your hips square to the wall in front of you, really stretching that top elbow upwards to the ceiling and pushing those hips forward. So then coming onto your mat, facing your mat. So you've got the length of the mat in front of you. Just sit your bottom back and just reach from fingertips all the way into your shoulders and into your hips. So child's pose, but making the sides of your body longer. And then from here, I want you to come onto your belly. So arms are going to be bent at the side of your body now. And I call this double U arm position. So we're going to do some exercises now, really working to the back extensors, which are the muscles that give us good posture and keep the spine upright. We want to choose a leg position, guys, that allows the pelvis to be nice and level on the mat. And I just want you to put your hands on your bum cheeks, your two glutes, and then really squeeze your bottom as tight as you can, and then let that go. Let's do that one more time. So we're going to recognise what not to do with this next exercise. So we don't want this where your bottom is really tight. Notice that when you release your glutes, your heels drop out to the side. So we want to keep that sense of lazy glutes here with those heels dropping out. Arms are bent in that W position. So from here, I want you to subtly draw your pubic bone over towards your belly button using your abdominal control. So we're not tightening the bottom to do that. Send the shoulders away from the ears and then reach your chest bone forwards to the front edge of the mat and then upwards to where the wall meets the ceiling. So you're creating a back bend in your upper spine and then coming back down to the mat. So your range of motion should be as big or as small as you can keep that last rib down on the mat. And the higher you lift your spine, the more control it takes in your abdominals to stabilise your lower back. So as we pull forwards and upwards, I'm thinking of drawing my pubic bone up to my belly button, but still trying to keep my bottom relaxed. So the more relaxed you keep your bottom, the more you're going to send that work into the back of the rib cage, which is where our intention needs to be. So really feeling those muscles at the back of a rib cage, pulling that chest forwards and upwards. Now see if you can get the same range of motion with your arms hovering off the floor. So chest forwards and upwards. And I find myself really wanting to squeeze my bottom here. So that would defeat the objective. Sometimes when we squeeze our bottoms, we can start to lift the upper back from the lower back. So we want to really get that working to the upper back. So relaxing that lower back as much as you can. So we're going to do this two more times, checking that you're not dipping your head back from the neck. So the head goes back because it follows the upper spine as the upper spine goes back. And then coming back down, stack your hands now. Let your forehead rest on your hands, bring your legs a little narrower, shoulders down. So keeping that pelvic stability, you're going to lengthen one leg back and then lift that leg up, lower that leg down and change sides. So this exercise is called swimming legs and this is a really great exercise to strengthen your glutes and your hamstrings, so your bum and the back of your thigh. So your challenge when you do this is to keep your pelvis stable so when the leg goes up your lower back doesn't sink down. So just like when you were lifting through the upper back, as the leg goes up, reinforce drawing your pubic bone up towards your belly button and try and feel that your lower abdomen is the lightest part of your torso on the mat. Sit. So if we can keep a straight leg and a stable pelvis, then we're really optimising the work into the glutes and the hamstrings, creating that nice mobility through the front of the hip. We're going to make this one the last one, so we're nice and even. Revisit that W arm position and just keep a little bit more energy in the legs now. We're not clenching those buttocks, you're going to feel a little bit of work here, but it's not that same squeeze of those glutes. So from here, guys, we're going to hold that W arm position, find as much back bend as you can keep, those glutes relaxed, and we're not changing the tension in the buttocks here, no more than you started with. And you should really feel the upper back drawing that pubic bone upwards still, use your abdominals for that. Now you're going to let your arms find the floor, and we want to make sure that we're not relying on pressing into the arms. I want you to then reach your arms forwards, and then re-bend the arms. So we should have lots of space to move here, guys. 
So, um, so what I mean by that is if you're sinking and relying on your arms to hold you up, as soon as that arm slides out, you're going to want to fall down. So if you keep that activation through the upper back, then the arms are free to glide forwards and then re-bend. So really holding yourself up with that upper back, keeping those shoulders away from the ears. And then you're going to keep that arm, the, the reach forwards of your arms, shoulders are down, and then I want to bring one arm up and then down and then change sides. I'm a bit limited for space because this is Pilates at home. I'm in my living room, so one arm is having to be a little bit bent, but that's okay. We're still getting the desired effect. I'm trying to keep that pelvis stable here. Now the reach of the arm facilitates the extension through your spine. So See if you can press the arm a little bit higher each repetition to get more activation through that mid upper back. Last one, which is quite a challenge, and then releasing down. Hands underneath your shoulders and then just push back onto your heels. So stretch that workout and then come into all fours. So we're going to do a similar exercise in our quadruped position. So we want to be active in our shoulder stabilizers, so push the floor away from you with the strength of your two straight arms, shoulders are down and navel into the spine. I want you to reach your right arm and left leg away from one another, so they're reaching away from the midline and then you're going to lift the arm and the leg up, lower back down and then slide back in. So we're going to change sides here, so arm and leg reach apart and then lift, it doesn't have to be a high lift, your furniture might dictate the height of your lift. Okay, but our focus when we do the lift is to make sure that when the arm and the leg go up, you're not sinking and collapsing. So again, your intention needs to be in your torso, the work it takes for your lower abs to support your lower back, so lower belly lifting up into your lower back, trying to think of the ribs lifting up. So this is an excellent exercise for strengthening the abdominals, the shoulder stabilizers and your back muscles. Let's hold the lift this time and we're going to do little pulses, up an inch, down an inch, trying to make the, the lifted leg reach as long as possible and we're trying to go for height without sinking through that lower back, making sure that torso is staying still. So really pulsing on that work and then release. And let's repeat that on the other side. Might have to give myself a little bit more room. So left arm, right leg. I'm going for that lift. And then pulsing up and down. So making sure that there's no changes to your spinal alignment here. So because I'm really working on my upper back extensors, my biggest focus is what my arm is doing. Opposite shoulder staying down, lifted arm, pressing up to the ceiling and then release and then just stretching out. Now coming onto your bottom, swivel your legs out in front of you. We're going to do a position called tabletop. So you're going to get some work through the backs of the legs and the buttocks but I want you to really focus on working through that mid back to open your chest. So you, your legs are bent with your feet flat and your fingertips either want to be pointing to your bottom or pointing out to the side walls, just a few inches away from your bottom. You're going to roll the shoulders back and then I want you to push down into your hands and lift your chest up. So this is work because by lifting that chest up you're activating through that middle back and you're stretching those tight shoulders. So if you have found, found yourself sitting a lot more recently, sometimes the chest can get tight, the shoulders can get tight, everything starts to come forwards. So we really want to focus on that lift up. And then send your knees forwards and lift your hips up. And this is your tabletop. Eye gaze looking down your body, shoulders pulling backwards, really opening up through that chest. And as you lower your hips, I want you to keep that chest lifting upwards and then release. Now, have yourself a little stretch through your back. So reaching down to your feet. Let's see, it's so stretching the whole of back body here. So not just your back muscles, but your hamstrings. Okay, now you've got the option of doing that again with bent legs. And if you are new, I definitely recommend staying with that. But I'm also going to give you the option of going with straight legs. So fingertips behind you, shoulders back. 
find that stretch first and this might be enough work you might not want to do anymore and then you're going to lift your hips up so we've got a straight diagonal line from the crown of the head to the toes pulling those shoulders back holding it so we get that activation through the back of the body and then hips down and stretch we've got one more level guys of this exercise to do and again feel free to stay with just the stretch with your bottom down or you can have legs bent or legs straight so shoulders back find a good wrist position lift the chest up push the floor away once we've got our shoulders back the chest lifted the middle back is active then lift the hips and then see if you can lift one leg and then down push down into that supporting leg to lift the opposite leg trying to keep that pelvis as stable as you can you can do this exercise with bent legs lifting one knee up taking that leg down so you're just really challenging the upper body position a lot more by lifting one leg last one and then hips down chest stays lifted and then reach to your feet stretch out through your back seeing if you can get your chest close to your legs your nose down towards your knees and then roll it up hopefully you felt the intensity in your back there guys but those exercises are really good for improving upper body posture really opening up those shoulders strengthening your back muscles see you another time